Ben Carson is still doing really well. He's kind of like, he's very steady. He hasn't gone anywhere. He had a political career that opened up for himself after he gave some deranged speeches about President Obama. He started getting booked on Fox. And his main selling point, as we've said many, po- many times on this show, is really simple. He is an African-American leader, doctor, whatever. I mean, he's a surgeon, obviously. I don't know that he's a leader. African-American pundit who tells white conservatives that racism doesn't exist. That will always they tell them what they want to hear. Tell them what they want to hear. That's always going to be a great market opportunity for anybody who wants to play that role. Uh, and Ben Carson plays that role incredibly well because he has a genuinely inspiring story, and because he's also genuinely deranged and delusional uh, and bizarre. And uh, part of and and the other thing that he does that the Republican base loves is he talks about Hitler and Mein Kampf, and he calls President Obama uh, anti-Israel, and now. Uh, maybe in the wake of the controversial uh, revelation that Ben Carson, when he was an actual uh, practicing surgeon and physician, engaged in research that involved fetal tissue, which hasn't seemed to hurt him at all, but now he needs to sort of double down on what first made him such a loved figure in the batty, insane Iowa caucus and broader Republican primary community, and that was his demented attacks on President Obama. So here he is talking with Fox News' Chris Wallace about why he called President Obama anti-Semitic. Chris Wallace is going to try to get him to be specific and look at what it comes down to for, or listen to what it comes down to for Ben Carson. Critical of President Obama, for you say, attacking his critics. Here's a, an article that you wrote this week in the Jerusalem Post. You call the president the divider in chief, and you write this. Shockingly, his diatribe also was replete with coded innuendos employing standard anti-Semitic themes involving implied disloyalty and nefarious influence related to money and power. Question, Barack Obama anti-Semitic? Well, all you have to do, Chris, is, like I have, go to Israel and talk to average people, you know, on all ends of that spectrum. And I couldn't find a single person there who didn't feel that this administration had turned their back on Israel. And I, th- I think, you know, the position of President of the United States should be one where you begin to, to draw people together behind a vision not one where you castigate uh, those who believe differently from you. I I think it's a possibility for great healing if it is used in the correct way. But, you know, it's one thing to, you one could argue your policy differs from Israel, but you say in your article, and you're talking about his domestic critics here in this country, that there is anti-Semitic themes there. What specifically is anti-Semitic in what the president is saying? Well, I think anything uh, is anti-Semitic that is against the survival of a state that is surrounded by enemies and by people who want to destroy them. And to, to sort of ignore that and to act like, you know, everything is normal there and that these people are paranoid, I think that's anti-Semitic. One sign, I guess, of your rise in the poll. So there you have it. Ben Carson went to Israel, wondered why they had a Knesset and their political system was so confusing, which we reported on a couple of months ago, compared Palestinians to Ferguson protesters, as in they were both violent, irrational and had no legitimate concerns about anything. And then talked did the, uh, the Thomas Friedman strategy and probably talked to a couple of drivers and a couple of people at restaurants who said, eh, Obama, no, doesn't like us. Came back, decided President Obama again, and and I guess it would make sense because, of course, President Obama is also like Hitler because if you've read Mein Kampf, you would understand what's going on here. And then somehow that all led through this bizarre, twisted maze to the same familiar garbage about Obama's giving Iran a nuke. How many times do we have to explain that this deal actually holds Iran back from their weapons program? 
That's completely irrelevant, obviously. And Ben Carson will get another couple of bumps in the polls for this. He's the sad version of Donald Trump. Donald Trump is at least boisterous and entertaining and being a pig-headed effing moron. Ben Carson is sad, but maybe even more of an egomaniac. You know, it takes a special type of sociopathy to, to unleash a soundbite like that where you're calling a president. I mean, literally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it. What the last president you'd actually call an anti-Semite would be like Richard Nixon, who literally in the White House was like talking about kikes, okay, and every other type of slur you could imagine for everybody, all right? I, I wouldn't call... I wouldn't even call George Bush Sr. an anti-Semite. I would just say he would probably prefer they not be at his club. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still not going to call him an anti-Semite. Barack Obama, who clearly is actually infatuated with a certain type of liberal Zionism and version of Israel that he believes in deeply, pushing a deal that every single member of the Israeli defense and intelligence establishment that's on record that we know of who has some type of objective view of the situation has said is actually on a net positive or either either a net positive or either nowhere near the type of catastrophe that idiots like Netanyahu or Mike Huckabee keep trying to push. And then Ben Carson has the temerity to come out and say all of this and then say, but you know, the other really tragedy here is that being a president can be a really healing opportunity for the country. You Jew hating Hitlerian Muslim. Ben Carson, man. And I guess I say all of that to just say he's going places. He's not dropping yes. out of the Republican Party, Republican primary anytime soon. Might be Trump Carson 2016. His numbers are going to continue to do well. And between Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, and Ben Carson, do you really need to know anything more about the politics, the psychological health? And then you throw in Jeb Bush. What more do you need to know about the Republican Party? It's unbelievable.